Hello and welcome to my presentation on Ride Comfort Simulation in IPG CarMaker for the Vehicle Dynamics segment of Applied Innovate Tech Weeks. My name is Tanasir Raj Bhaskar and I'm a master student at the University of Applied Sciences Bing. I would like to start by giving a brief introduction on the project. It was conducted in HMATC as part of my bachelor thesis earlier this year. The objective of this project was to set up a real-time simulation of a ride comfort test procedure in CarMaker and to study the validity of this simulation under various vehicle configurations and operating conditions using real-road measurements as reference. The ride comfort test procedure, which needed to be simulated, was conducted as such. The test vehicle was equipped with CDC dampers, and the damper ECU was flashed in a way that it can be switched between three constant damping, namely low, medium, and high damping. For the measurements, the vehicle was driven on two different roads, a smooth and a badly maintained road, at 50, 70, and 90 km per hour. A total of 15 test configurations were measured as shown in this table. In terms of approach, the first step in this project was data collection. This involves collecting the measurement results of the tests mentioned earlier and information about the test vehicle and the test roads. The next step was parameterization of the test procedure in CarMaker. Simultaneously, a post-processing routine was developed. Once the parameterization was done and the post-processing routine was functional, the test procedure with low damping was simulated. An initial comparison of the simulation results against the measurements was done to find possible mistakes and inaccuracy in parameterization. Based on the analysis made from initial comparison, the parameters were then optimized to increase the accuracy of the simulation results. Lastly, a validity study was conducted on the CarMaker simulation model with the optimized parameters, whereby remaining test configurations were simulated and compared to its real-road measurements. That sums up how this project was carried out. Now, we'll move on to the parameterization in CarMaker. During the parameterization, the focus was on the following aspects of the vehicle as they are crucial for ride comfort. These aspects are mass properties of the test vehicle, engine mount properties, properties of suspension components such as spring, stabilizer, damper, buffers, and suspension bushings, the tire, and last but not least, the road model. For the mass properties, based on weight measurements and inputs from data sheets of the test vehicle, the parameterization was done as such that the weight distribution across all four wheels is as accurate as possible. The mass was also partitioned in sprung and unsprung mass. For the engine mounting, the test vehicle was equipped with a hydraulic engine mount. So the mount's properties are amplitude and frequency dependent. Hence, the hydro mount model, which is available in CarMaker version 8 and onwards, fits the requirement of this project very well. As for the suspension components, for the spring and buffers, the information from data sheet was directly applied in the built-in spring and buffer model of CarMaker. As for the damper, instead of using the built-in damper model, a more complex and slightly more advanced MX damper model was used. As for the tire model, due to limited data on tire, and due to the requirement of this simulation being real-time capable, the readily available real-time tire model with the tire data generated from IPG tire data set generator was used in the simulation. Apart from the vehicle model, it was also important to ensure the road scan data were integrated into the road model properly, since road profile is the main source of excitation affecting the ride comfort. Moving on to the initial comparison. After parameterizing the vehicle model and road model, only according to the collected data, the simulation was carried out for two test configurations. The configurations were low damping with cruising speed of 50 km per hour on badly maintained road 
and on smooth road. We will have a look at the results of these two configurations. The diagrams show the frequency response of vertical acceleration of the driver's seat and of all four wheels from the simulation and measurement. Let's have a look on the first configuration which is the simulation on badly maintained road. Looking at the wheel response, both left wheels correlate well with the measurement in terms of frequency and amplitude. The right wheels, however, show relatively high deviation at 15 Hz region, where the natural frequency of the wheel lies. Looking at the frequency response at the driver's seat, we can conclude that the car maker simulation can catch the correct tendency of the vehicle's right comfort behavior. In primary right region, the vehicle body's heave mode is represented correctly, but with lower amplitude at this frequency. From 3 to 13 Hz, the simulation correlates well with the measurement. Around 15 Hz, where the natural frequency of the wheels lie, the simulation shows lack of amplitude which could be a result of the frequency response of the right wheels as pointed out before. The second test configuration used in initial comparison was also the one with low damping and 50 km per hour, but on smooth road. So the first noticeable features in these diagrams are the peaks plotted with dashed line which are in the measurement results but not in the simulation results. These peaks can be disregarded since they rep represent the wheel orders due to imbalance in the wheel, which cannot be simulated using the simple tire model used in the simulation. Based on frequency response of vertical acceleration at driver's seat and all four wheels, the car maker simulations gives a poorer result on smooth road compared to badly maintained road. The simulated wheel response, while in terms of amplitude, is not far away from the measurement, in terms of wheel behavior, does not reflect the correct tendency of the wheel behavior. In primary ride, the simulation was not able to match the body's natural frequency correctly. Between around 5 to 13 Hz, the simulation displays the same tendency as the measurements but with the acceleration amplitude being too high around 10 Hz region. In the next step, which is parameter optimization, certain parameters were manipulated within an acceptable range to improve the simulation results. The manipulated parameters were the vehicle position on virtual road, tire stiffness, amplification factor of the hydro mount model under engine mounting, an amplification factor of damper. The optimized simulation results of test configuration 1 and 2 are shown in these diagrams. With the optimized set of parameters, the simulation on the badly maintained road correlate well with the measurement in the primary ride region. In secondary ride region, the simulation correlate well with the measurement in terms of frequency but still lacks in terms of acceleration amplitude. On smooth road, the simulation stayed the same in primary ride region, but the correlation in secondary ride region has improved. With the same set of parameters, the remaining 13 test configurations were simulated for the validation process of the car maker simulation. Only the driver's seat's vertical acceleration was used for the validation process since effects of all the masses, suspension components and engine mounts on ride comfort are represented in the frequency response diagram of the driver's seat's vertical acceleration. For a quick overview, I have included driver's seat response of four of the remaining 13 test configurations. Based on the quick overview of these four diagrams, we can conclude that the car maker simulation can portray the ride comfort behavior of the actual test vehicle very well up to the frequency of 18 Hz. However, there are still discrepancies in terms of the amplitude. The validation process was further divided into 
validation of the primary write and secondary write. For the validation in primary write, which is up to 5 Hz, the objective was to find the accuracy of the peak due to vehicle body's resonance. Two characteristic values were calculated for this purpose, the normalized error in peak frequency and the normalized error in peak amplitude. The peaks chosen for this calculation are the highest value in the primary right region, as shown in this diagram with rate points. For the secondary right, since this represents a larger frequency spectrum and is affected by the effects of multiple vehicle components, which often overlaps, the validation process was very subjective. This validation process observations of the comparison diagrams were made. Both the positive and negative points were recorded in a table. So, for the primary right region, the previously mentioned values were calculated. Based on these values, the frequency error is generally below 20%. This means the simulation can portray the vehicle body's heave mode well. However, there are two configurations which are an exception. We'll look at the comparison diagrams of these two configurations. We can see that these peaks of both the measurement and simulation are not well defined as we would normally expect a single peak in the body's natural frequency region. This could be due to the window function settings of the fast Fourier transform used to calculate the frequency response. The amplitude error in primary right region is also generally below 20%, which is an indicator that the car maker simulation is good. The error could be due to minor inaccuracies in mass parameterization, especially in the partition of the mass in sprung and unsprung mass. For the secondary right region, as mentioned earlier, the observations were recorded in a table, as shown here. A positive observation is that, generally, the simulation portrays correct ride comfort behavior up to 18 Hz. Simulation of the test at 90 km per hour on both badly maintained road and smooth road, however, correlates poorly with the real measurement. On badly maintained road, the simulated acceleration amplitude is slightly lower than the measured amplitude in all cases. This again might be related to slight inaccuracy in mass parameterization. In conclusion, in primary right, the simulation gives results with an accuracy of at least 80%. In secondary right, the accuracy was not quantified. Except for the tests at 90 km per hour, the simulation correlates well with the measurement on smooth road. On badly maintained road, the simulation portrayed the correct behavior but with lack of acceleration amplitude. As for the outlook, I would like to discuss how the simulation could be improved or how the validation process could be made more reliable. An important step to improve the simulation accuracy should be the implementation of, of a more complex tire model, such as F-Tire or MF-Swift tire model. These models have been proven to yield a more accurate result with other simulation softwares. However, these complex models are characterized using a large set of parameters and its calculations are run in a separate software. This will increase the simulation time and the real-time capability might not be achieved. Another suggestion would be to use the exact component installed in the test vehicle for any sort of test to determine the properties of that component. An example would be the engine mounts, whose properties might vary from a unit to another due to the permissible deviation in production. In order to break down the problem into smaller parts and to reduce the sources of uncertainty in the validation process, it would be helpful to do a test on a less complex road excitation profile using synthetic road profiles such as sine wave profile. And with that, I would like to thank you for watching this presentation. Feel free to contact us for any further questions.